What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. All right, what's going on guys? This is Rob and am I recording? I am recording, cool. All right, uh, Gordon, keep this in. I think it's funny to put the little tidbits in there when people are just kind of like, Rob has no idea what he's doing. He doesn't even know if he's recording. What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with how to kill superheroes uh, because you guys are a morbid bunch and you guys love seeing us kill superheroes. <laughs> I don't know why. We've killed so many so far. I think, what, we've killed something like 30 superheroes over the course of like the last two years. We've killed so many different superheroes. Yeah, dude, how long, how long has this series been, this series has been going on for like a year and a half, I think. Maybe like a year? Something like that. But we've been doing it for a while, so we've gotten pretty good <laughs> at killing off superheroes. But of course, in this video, we are talking about Dr. Manhattan. Now, of course, Dr. Manhattan is really like the big talking point in DC Rebirth. And a lot of you guys have asked for his character. So I'm like, okay, I mean, I guess we can, you know, if you guys really want to see Dr. Manhattan. It is kind of funny because I feel like we should say a few words you know, if we're gonna kill him off. But like, what do you say? Like you're standing at the funeral for Dr. Manhattan. You're just kind of like, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. he was blue and walked around naked. It was weird, kept saying something about getting in tune with nature, I have no idea. But he did make some good chili. And then everybody's like, yeah, yeah, he made some pretty damn good chili. Uh, but for all of you guys who don't know, who may not be familiar with Dr. Manhattan, he made his debut on Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons in 1986, and that was the only place that he appeared up until 2012, when DC launched a line of prequel comics that almost every single Watchmen fan hated that was called Before Watchmen. It wasn't until DC Rebirth launched in 2016 that Dr. Manhattan was introduced into the main DC universe. Now, Dr. Manhattan was created when nuclear physicist John Osterman was trapped inside the test area of an experiment that his team was conducting on the removal of intrinsic fields, which are completely made up, but they are essentially what holds human beings together molecularly. Now, if the intrinsic field is removed, the human body completely disintegrates, which is exactly what happened to John Osterman. However, where John Osterman was originally presumed dead uh, over the course of the next several months he actually reappears but this time he has blue skin and more importantly he's naked that's not true i mean he is naked but it's not important that he's naked i don't know why i said that's important but more importantly he now has a set of re ridiculously crazy powers. So following his accident, Dr. Manhattan can manipulate matter on a subatomic level, which basically allows him to do pretty much anything he wants. I mean, he can use this ability to not only do impressive things like build a fortress on Mars, as well as an atmosphere that allows human beings to breathe there and grow himself to great big, huge sizes, but he can also use it in battle, both defensively and offensively. Now, in terms of defense, Dr. Manhattan creates a force field around Silk Spectre 2, you know, Lori, Jespez, whatever her name is, uh, that protects her from his falling fortress, so we can infer that he pretty much can shield himself from any and all physical damage by doing this anytime he wishes. Dr. Manhattan has also used his powers offensively on several occasions as well. Most notably, spoiler alert for a 30-year-old story, he disintegrates his former teammate Warshak at the conclusion of Watchmen. Now, in addition to this, Dr. Manhattan can teleport himself or others anywhere he chooses, possesses telekinesis, and can create multiple copies of himself that can all function independently and simultaneously meaning that he can literally be in multiple places at the same time. Now, as we come to the last of Dr. Manhattan's powers that we need to consider in determining how he can be killed, I wanna clear up a common misconception about his character. Now, a lot of people believe that Dr. Manhattan is omniscient, but that isn't technically correct. Omniscience refers to the ability to know everything that is knowable, which Dr. Manhattan can't do. Uh, Batman does that. What he can do, however, is he can observe his own past, present, and future at the same time. You guys think I'm making fun of Batman? No, I'm serious. Like, when he was in the Mobius chair, he was the god of knowledge. He knew everything about everything. He even know he knew the identities of the three Jokers, and then wouldn't tell us. We have we've we've waited all this time, DC. We waited all this time. We want to know what's going on with the three Jokers. Please, for the love of God, give us the story about the three Jokers. I firmly believe one of them is a comedian in Doomsday Clock. But what this means is that he can perceive uh, anything that has ever happened or will happen strictly to him. But if something happens on the other side of the world that had no effect on Doctor. Dr. Manhattan, then he simply wouldn't know it. But it doesn't really help us since any attempt to kill him would, by definition, occur within Dr. Manhattan's timeline. And so he's gonna be able to detect it before it ever happens. So it makes him one of the most powerful characters in the DC universe. There's even an argument right now that he's the one that made the DC universe. I don't know how you kill a guy who created the entirety of a universe and probably the multiverse along with it, I have no clue. But if you still need more convincing, there has even been evidence in support of this idea since the launch of DC Rebirth. Dr. Manhattan easily 
easily vaporize Pandora, a character who had single-handedly defeated the ultra-powerful Seven Deadly Sins, and Mr. Mixopitalik, an extremely adept reality warper in his own right, acknowledged that his power pales in comparison to Dr. Manhattan's. So I think that it's fair to say that we're talking about taking down one of the most difficult characters to kill in the entirety of the DC universe. So the question is, can it be done? Is it possible to take down Dr. Manhattan? And if so, then how? Well, I think the first thing that we're going to have to deal with is the fact that Dr. Manhattan is going to see any attempt on his life coming long before it happens. Fortunately, there is a way to counteract this. In the Watchmen comics, Ozymandias uses a tachyon generator to negate Manhattan's ability to perceive the future. Now, tachyons are particles that may or may not exist, but theoretically move faster than the speed of light. I'm pretty sure tachyons exist in Star Trek. I have no idea if they exist in the real world. I know in Star Trek, it's like engage the tachyon pulse or something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I remember watching Star Trek The Next Generation, which was the only good Star Trek. Like, Deep Space Nine sucked until the Dominion Wars. It was the most boring show ever until the Dominion Wars. And then, like, the original Star Trek was never good. And then Star Trek Voyager was just a show about the Borg that lasted like seven seasons. Next Generation is definitely the best one. Only in season three going forward though, seasons one and two are terrible. Can I also say that like best of both worlds, when Picard gets turned into a Borg, it's like the best season finale ever. Like the season ended with Picard being turned into a Borg and like everybody was like, no, I can't believe that. It was, it was super cool. It was pretty awesome. Like that's like ending a season of Breaking Bad with Walter White being shot in the head and then just leaving it. And then like The Walking Dead when like supposedly, you know, when like Negan killed somebody. That was a terrible decision by AMC. Anyway, uh, we digress. <laughs> now, that still leaves us to deal with the fact that Dr. Manhattan is pretty much invulnerable to harm and doesn't require food, water, or air to survive, which basically makes him immortal. Since he can manipulate matter, he could effectively undo any injury that we could inflict. Furthermore, it was once stated that Dr. Manhattan had the ability to turn a gun into steam and bullets into mercury. So any weapon we try to attack him with can be neutralized by his matter manipulation. Now, we do see one instance where Dr. Manhattan was harmed when he was vaporized by Ozymandias toward the end of Watchmen, but he reformed himself once again, only this time it took a matter of seconds instead of like a matter of months. So this does not leave us with a lot of options, but I can think of two possible ways that Dr. Manhattan can be killed. The first of these ways is really more of a plot device than an actual plan, but since Dr. Manhattan's abilities are science-based, he potentially has a weakness against magic as many science-based characters do. Of course, the one time we saw Dr. Manhattan interact with a magic user was when he vaporized Pandora. So magic is far from a surefire way to take him down. But if someone was able to cast a spell on Dr. Manhattan before he could vaporize them, then maybe it would do something. I predict we'll see this happen in some fashion during Doomsday Clock, and it probably won't work. But like I said, we don't have a whole lot of options. But the other possibility that I think might work would be to use telepathy. Now, if someone was a strong enough telepath, I think they could actually alter Manhattan's brain so that he simply would not protect himself from harm or reform himself after being vaporized. While we have never seen Dr. Manhattan encounter a telepath, and so we don't really know with any certainty if that would work, we have seen Dr. Manhattan at least demonstrate an ability to be influenced psychologically by Ozymandias to basically retreat to Mars and ultimately go along with Ozymandias' plan. It's also important to point out here that Ozymandias has no telepathic powers or any powers whatsoever, so someone who does possess telepathy could perhaps convince Dr. Manhattan not to reform himself. If so, he would simply be vaporized just as he was in the Watchmen comic, and then he would never reform. It's a long shot, I know, but we're literally trying to kill Dr. Manhattan, guys. We could throw anything out there. We could just say things. We could say Batman with prep time. We could say like Superman 1 million comes back and just punches him to death. We could say like anything, like no answer we give will work. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to kill this guy. No real way to kill this guy. He's crazy powerful. He's giant. He's blue. He's got an atom symbol thing on his head. I mean, he was designed to be a godly character. So I don't, I don't know how you kill God. I don't have an answer to that question, guys. I don't know. Uh, but those are the only two possibilities that I can come up with that have even the slightest bit of potential to take out Dr. Manhattan because any conventional means would almost certainly fail since he would literally just remove us from existence by ripping our atoms apart and scattering us through the winds. I mean, that's the only thing I could, <laughs> that'd be kind of funny, you know, that'd be, that'd be hilarious. Like, like Superman's like, like, you know what, Dr. Manhattan, this conversation isn't going any well. We gotta, we gotta get into a fight. And Dr. Manhattan's like, nope. And then he just literally <laughs> disperses Superman's atoms across the spaceways. That'd be hilarious to me. I, I don't know. Like, I'm, I need to stop recording things at two o'clock in the morning because I'm kind of all over the place. But if you guys are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.